Hello, and welcome to the hard work of implementing PLM, aligning and engaging people to make it work. I'm Amy Armitage, Managing Principal of Delta NPD. We specialize in leadership, team, and organizational change consulting in PLM and new product development. I'm here today to talk about what many see as a big challenge in PLM, how to manage the behavioral and cultural transformation that is required. In other words, how do we manage the people side of PLM? How do we reorganize business units, teams, and the work itself to ensure that the right behaviors will happen to get the results we need? Some of you may have seen an earlier working session title. If it isn't used, it's useless. Don't worry, be happy with your PLM implementation. As many of us know who have done work in technology implementation, the hard part can be getting people to use new applications. It can be difficult to get the collaboration behaviors that may be required, and it can be difficult to give up comfortable old ways of doing things. And with due respect to Bobby McFerrin, who sang, why worry, be happy, we do worry about implementation risk of PLM. Now, on to our agenda for the day. Why you should worry about PL implementation, the people challenge. We'll look a little bit at the performance gap that's now occurring because of the people challenge with PLM. Secondly, we'll look at managing behavior change. And I'll share with you some simple behavioral models for how to address your PLM implementation. Thirdly, we'll look at how the world of work is changing and its impact on PLM. We'll look also at a change management approach for PLM. We'll look then at 10 highly effective PLM people practices. And finally, we'll look at some very exciting research that the McFletcher Corporation has done on PLM work alignment and specifically in the product life cycle. And now, on with the show. If you've been following Jim Brown on his Tech Clarity website recently, you are following an interesting blog fest on this very subject. Thank you, Jim, for the midnight fuel to get the presentation going. I will quote Jim, who probably knows more about the technology and process side than most. The technical challenges pale compared to the need to change the way people work. I believe that PLM is hard, not because of the technology, but because of the people. Implementing PLM requires a business transformation effort. Michael Burkett, VP of AMR Research, adds to this discussion. There is still a disconnect a lack of overall ownership for PLM in an organization. Bringing a new product to market is a cross-functional process, but when you ask who actually owns that process, it gets a little fuzzy. It may be a wild sp statistic, and I think we might agree with the wild statistic, but I'd say 75 to 80% of the challenge is cultural. Finally, one of my favorite insights I found last week when I read another posting from Kenneth Wong's website and a post entitled, What PLM Can Learn from Social Media. Comparing the explosive growth of social media over the last few years with the somewhat slowed growth rate of PLM, Wong argues that PLM can learn much from social media's focus on people and how social media builds and manages people relationships. While simple, it is a point to ponder when he states, put people before the 